Hello, it's John Heaton, and uh, today I'm going to discuss the last Wings album, Back to the Egg, from 1979, and uh, give you a bit of background about what was going on at the time, and show you a couple of singles either side of it, and then uh, show you the vinyl as well. So, uh, this was Wings' final album. Uh, he went solo after this. He actually recorded McCartney 2 around about the same time this album came out, but it didn't get released till the following year. Uh, it did okay, got to the top 10, but it didn't uh, do well by, by Paul's standards. So with hindsight, he, uh, he said he felt like another dollar another day, which is a bit ironic because he didn't make huge amounts of money. But uh, I think what he meant is uh, or he was going through the motions, uh, several different lineups of the band. This was the last lineup, and it looks looks great. This lineup looks great, and they made videos to go with most of the songs on this album, and they're great videos. Sadly, unreleased to this day. And I guess one day he'll come up with this album on his archive release series. But the way it's going, we're going to be waiting another ten years or so. Uh, so this out, this single came out a couple months before the album. Uh, and wasn't included on the album because that's the way Paul worked at the time which is good value for money for the fans but uh, it's a bit ironic that this track Good Night Tonight which is a great disco-ish single with a great bass line and Daytime Nighttime Suffering those two tracks are probably better than virtually all of the album that followed so a little bit unfortunate um, but uh, I, I still think he was right not to include it on the album. Uh, this is a US copy of Back to the Egg with the, the promo sticker, which I picked up recently. Uh, they released three singles, I think, or two singles from this album at least, but none of them did particularly well, particularly in the UK. Uh, I'm going to show you my sheet music because there's some nice pictures in here. It's the track listing. Live picture there in the video. And then we've got the various pictures from the videos. And then at the end, we've got these egg postcards which I'm happy to say I resisted the temptation to tear out and send to anyone so that, that's a nice little item I'm quite happy to have that so okay to the album itself uh, the first thing that should be said about this album is he was definitely trying to be rockier than the previous couple of albums or previous three or four albums, he'd been accused of being a little bit soft, which is completely unfair. But So he notched up the uh, electric guitar level a bit. And uh, some of these songs are pretty, pretty, wouldn't say bordering on New Wave, but they're, they're pretty uh, sort of punkish and uh, kind of fast rockers. Uh, the first track on the album is Reception, which is a kind of instrumental uh, song, not, nothing special, good bass line. And then getting closer, the first single um, is a very, very good track. Uh, the words are not particularly good, so if you can just forget what Paul's singing about, it's a good track. Play it loud, and then "We're Open Tonight" is a nice ballad. Um, not top rate, but not nothing, nothing wrong with it. And then "Spin It On" brings to mind the uh, the video. Uh, very fast, drumming from Steve Holly. Not much of a song, maybe melodically, but rocks along. Again and again and again from Denny Lane. This is actually signed by Denny Lane here for me, 1987. Uh, it's one of his best wing songs. It's great, I love it. And great backing vocals from Paul. And check out the video for that one. It is great, all of them. Uh, walking through the, the fields, 
great video. Uh, Old Siam Sir was the first single, it's the next track, probably my favourite track on the album actually. I think it's a great track. Managed to reach about the number number 23 I think in the UK. Uh, pretty nonsensical words but good track. Arrow Through Me is a kind of keyboards dominated ballad. Nice tune, maybe it goes on a minute too long. But well sung. I think this was the single they chose in the US and it might have done a little bit better than old Siam so maybe scrape the top 20 or something. And then the uh, orchestra theme is when he invites all his mates from uh, Led Zeppelin and The Who and various other bands to come and play on a kind of superstar orchestra session and it's quite fun, it's a simple tune. There's a video for this knocking around as well. Uh, it's not brilliant. Got slagged off at the time, I seem to remember. In fact, I have to say, being a Wings fan in 1979 was not that easy because he wasn't that uh, trendy. It wasn't that trendy to like him, you know. Much, much trendier to like uh, The Clash and Elvis Costello and people. So, you know. I stuck up for Paul, I stuck up for this album, I seem to remember, and I'll still stick up for it. I think it's a good album. To, to You is the next track, maybe not the best. Decent enough rocker. And then we've got a couple of ballads, After the Ball, Million Miles. Nice tune. Not very good words. Winter Rose, Love Awake. Very nice tune again. Not much to write home about regarding the words again. The broadcast, nice poem, read out by the owner of the castle where they recorded the album, with piano in the background. So glad to see you here as another orchestra effort, and quite frankly, it, it, uh, this one doesn't work. This is just loud and no tune, and I don't know. It's a bit like the tracks he did on Broad Street when he was trying to be rocky. It doesn't really work. Baby's Request, lovely ballad, kind of 30s, 40s style ballad, great melody. So the label is one of the best features of this album. So for any, uh, any of you who've cooked eggs will know that this type of egg, fried egg, is called Sunny Side Up, this is Side A. This type of egg, side B, is called Over Easy. So, Paul had high hopes for this album, and uh, unfortunately, it didn't sell nearly as many as he was hoping. And for that reason, among others, um, it was the end of Wings. And then a few months later, he came up with this single, which had Wings on it in the video but it was credited significantly to Paul McCartney. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe I stand a better chance of having hits under my own name than Wings. I don't know. But this song was hard to defend at the time. It's catchy enough. It's pleasant enough. But it really isn't he a heavyweight contribution to the world of music um, but it did reach number six so maybe Paul was right commercially speaking and he would go on to have great commercial success in the 80s uh, early 80s in particular but I feel he uh, tended to rely too much on collaborations with other artists such as uh, Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson and I think he was, he did, I think his 70s work is better than any of his subsequent decades work by, by a distance. And I think Wings deserves more recognition. And I think this particular album with Lawrence Duber on guitar, Steve Holly on drums, Denny of course on guitar, Linda and Paul, is way underrated, way underrated. I'm gonna give this album a nine out of 10.
look at the cover great cover as well thank you for watching see you next time